Not that bad. <laughs> the slides not that bad. Oh, behind. Okay. Okay, great. So let's get started. So good afternoon, everyone. We are CR Capital, a well-established and trusted partner of Cape May. My name is Stephen La, head of CR Capital, and I have gathered the best of the best uh, from around the globe to give you the advice that you need today. So joining me on my team is Chief Economist Ryan Wu, SFR single family rental specialist, Christopher, investment banker, Clemens Weimar, and our ops team who are on the ground assessing the properties in the portfolio and can't be here today, Frank Weiss and Will Gienema. So we know that there is a lot of uncertainty in the capital markets as of today, especially with high levels of inflation. So I would like to address the first question on everyone's mind, and that is, uh, what is the Fed going to do? And our expectation is that the Fed is going to continue raising the Fed fund rate. Right now, inflation is nowhere near the Fed's target of 2%. And history tells us that the Fed is willing to act to tame inflation, even at the cost of putting the economy into a recession. So there will be some short-term impacts, but we are confident in the long-term value that real estate, particularly assets within our portfolio, will hold. So we've looked into the portfolio, we've crunched the numbers, and we estimate for there to be a circa 11 to 12% decrease in valuation on gross asset values of the fund. However, the good news is uh, for the fund is that we will not be breaching any financial covenants. We do not risk going into default, and we have sufficient liquidity to meet our near-term obligations. Moving forward, taking a view into the future, we've looked into the fund's asset allocation, and we believe there is some strong benefit to increase exposure into the single family uh, rental asset class. In terms of the two investment opportunities in front of us, in front of Cape May, the Opco and Propco investment, we would pass on the Opco investment as the returns do not justify the risks associated, but we would take on the Propco investment as this uh, strategically aligns with our fund's uh, investment objectives. So very quickly, snapshot of the portfolio. This, this fund is a two billion core plus evergreen fund focused on residential assets here. The main objective of this fund is to provide long-term stable recurring revenue for our investors. And this is our North Star, our guiding principle that has underpinned our investment advice today. I will now like to pass over to Ryan Wu to give us an overview of macroeconomic conditions. Thank you, Stephen. Um, as we all know, macro environment is tough this year. It's definitely not as good as this photo. Inflation has gone to a level that we didn't see for the past 40 years. Fed has therefore raised the interest rate rapidly to tackle this issue. And that has led to huge um, market corrections across assets. It's hard to predict when this painful process will end, but it's clear that, that the, the current inflation level is still much higher than the long-term inflation target rate of 2%. We can also look back in history. In the 1980s, when the economy was suffering from high inflation, at the time, Fed had to increase the interest rate to go even beyond inflation growth to bring the inflation down. So given the fact that at the moment, the inflation growth is still about 6% to 7%, and the federal fund rate is about 4%. We think in the near term, there will be more rate hikes coming up. Another piece of information that we can derive from this graph is that there is high correlation between aggressive rate hikes and recessionary periods. For the past 40 years, all the recession actually followed fast tightening monetary policies. And Given that the recent interest rate has been raised rapidly, we think in the near future, it's very likely we will see a recession coming up and that will very likely impact the value of our portfolio. However, as a real estate investor, we can also go back to the history and look at the data. The data taught us in the, in the economic downturns, we can be conservative, but we should not panic or overreact because 
for the past recessions, the value of residential real estate always recover from the corrections, even after the 2008 great financial crisis. So our advice to the fund is that going back to the basic principle of an evergreen fund, focusing on the long-term value and return that we can create and enjoy. However, in the short term, we should enhance our balance sheet to make sure that we have enough liquidity to weather through the storm and to capture the potential opportunity of deploying capital when the market is relatively cheap. Next, Stephen will talk more about the status of our existing portfolio. Thank you, Ryan. So to look into the fund portfolio in and of itself and to do a deep dive. We have analyzed the impact that we believe will be felt across our assets and we estimate this to be a circa 12% decrease in gross asset values uh, at a portfolio level here. This, as Ryan has identified, is a systematic macro level issue. If you take a look at both NACREEK and NACREEK data released in quarter three of this year, this is an industry-wide level uh, issue fueled by cap rate uh, expansion. So we are not alone in feeling the impact here. However, our competitive advantage is our low levels of leverage as you can see denoted by these orange bars here. And even once the impact has fully materialized in quarter two of 2023, we are still well below our portfolio-wide LTV cap of 55%. We have enough headroom to weather through this downturn and any further deepening of the situation here. Next, in terms of liquidity, we've looked into multiple scenarios and we are confident that we have sufficient liquidity to meet our near-term obligations here. So to walk us through this, we have a base case scenario, a maximum cash need scenario in the middle, and then our proposed way forward. So first of all, we anticipate for there to be $110 million in redemption calls as investors all across the industry are currently over allocated uh, to, to real estate. And that's purely the impact of the denominator effect where we're seeing fixed asset, fixed income assets and public equities taking a hit. Next, we're aware that there are $120 million of maturing loans coming due. And so in our base case scenario, we can cater for this with 2 million of LP, additional LP uh, equity being put forward, as well as drawing down on 30 million of our current uh, 85 million of unrestricted cash. In our maximum cash need scenario, we have an additional 120 for the PropCo Opco investment opportunity. We can cater for this by using the 200 mil from the LP, uh, additional LP commitment, 85 from our total unrestricted cash bucket. Uh, we have 28 million from an outstanding line of credit that we have not uh, drawn upon yet. We would require an extra 37 million of additional capital, which we are confident we can either raise through additional equity or with our sufficient leverage uh, headroom can raise this through, through debt. However, a more prudent way forward that we would advise is to look at uh, our maturing loan and to either refinance that or extend the debt term uh, for, for, that, for those maturing loans, which we anticipate will come, from, will come with an additional debt service, but we can cater for that sufficiently with our outstanding line of credit, not necessarily needing to dip into our unrestricted cash, keeping that bucket quite healthy. Now, doing a deeper dive into the subsector asset classes we hold within the portfolio here, as identified, we have a range in that short-term decrease in gross asset values ranging from about 15 to 5%. High-rise apartments located on primary coastal markets feeling the impact the worst as they have the greatest, uh, they're experiencing the greatest headwinds there. Whereas for affordable housing, much more resilient product, all of our assets classify us as section eight there. The key message here though, is that these are short-term impacts fueled by cap rate expansions. And residential assets historically have had great resiliency in its income return. And since we are a core plus evergreen fund that is not at risk of default, we are able to manage through our short-term liquidity needs. We should not do any rash decisions in having a quick fire sale of our assets. And therefore we propose to maintain our positions, to hold on to these assets and to weather the storm. Student housing very much fits into that principle. However, what we would like to draw your attention to is the land for development and the single family rental asset class there. In terms of the land for development, this is zoned as industrial and this does not align to the core purpose 
of our fund that focuses on uh, residential on, on residential assets. It does not align in terms of the development opportunistic risk to our uh, to our desire to provide long-term stable recurring revenues to our investors. This here, particularly when there is negative leverage, cash on cash yield at five and a half, interest rates at eight, this holds no development value to us. And we propose to let this go. Industrial sector is still quite hot. We're fielding market interest. And we believe there is a good opportunistic industrial developer that's willing to take this off of our hands. Next, single family rental. This is an area that we see as a growing area and a growing asset class that has some strong uh, developing real estate fundamentals with great, great, great growth opportunity, uh, opportunities here. And so this is an area that we see great benefit to our portfolio to increase exposure. And Christopher will take us through the reasons of why. Thanks, Stephen. We dug deeper into single family rental asset and did the SWOT analysis to assess the single family mar rental market. We found that there's a lot of strength, especially in this demographic trends and home of ownership affordability crisis. We also found that the yield is actually more attractive than multifamily and it's the hottest asset class in the market right now. So liquidating it wouldn't be a problem. We see that there is a weakness as the competitor grow, the barrier of entry has been increased and there is a threat of natural disaster. But we also see that there is a lot of growth potential as the biggest threat in the US right now only tapped 0.5% of the total addressable market. All in all, we still do believe that gap may should increase the exposure of single family rental in which opportunity will be explained by Clements. Thanks, Christopher. So we understand that Cape May has received two investment opportunities in the attractive single family for rent segment. The first opportunity is an investment into a real estate operating company called Sidewalk. And the second opportunity is an investment into a real estate top core, which will be managed by Sidewalk. And in addition, the, there's the existing opportunity to invest into both the OPCO and OPCO. And as outlined by Stephen earlier, due to our detailed analysis, we believe that the OPCO, we would not pursue the OPCO opportunity, but see a strong strategic fit in the PropCO opportunity. I will now run you through a brief overview of the OPCO investment opportunity. The OPCO investment opportunity is a minority stake acquisition into Sidewalk. Sidewalk is active in the single family for rent business in the operating segment and is currently operating 3,200 homes. The, current, the company is not yet profitable and, um, and is therefore looking to, for, to raise new capital in order to fund its operating losses. The proposed valuation is at a 75 million enterprise value, which results in a 9.4 times revenue multiple. In addition, Cape May could enter into this OPCO via two scenarios, either via common equity, where a 20% stake would lead to a, a 20 million capital injection would lead to a 23.5% stake post money, or via preferred equity, which would result in an 8% annual return and a 10% equity kicker. We have in a second step, now preferred first, analyze this on a, on a detailed business assessment and then on a rigorous um, financial analysis in addition, from a business perspective, and this is in our view here really the key point, we consider this investment opportunity to be fully out of scope for a core plus residential real estate fund and believe that it compares from a risk return perspective more to an early stage tech investment and therefore view this investment as more suitable for an early stage tech fund, but not for a core plus real estate fund. And when we conducted our financial analysis, we basically found that this investment return for this investment is highly dependent on the achievement of the underlying revenue growth. And therefore we have factored in, in addition to our base case, also a downside scenario where we assumed what would happen to the returns in case there would be slight delays or a slowdown in the revenue growth. And these delays, as you can, if we go first to the common equity example, you can see that in case the base case is matched, this investment would yield an attractive return of 18 to 35%, depending on the exit multiple, but could also go down in case there would be any delays in the revenue growth 
to minus 5% and plus 6%. And in order to further outline this high reliability on the revenue growth, we have prepared the following chart where we analyze how long it took key tech startups in order to reach from 10 million of recurring revenues to 100 million recurring revenues. And as you can see, only 8% of these startups and among them, some of the most successful startups manage this growth within such a short period. And um, in, on top of that, we believe Sidewalk is also not a pure tech play, but also has a stationary component due to its maintenance and repair segment included. And due to all of these reasons, we believe that it is not worth to invest into the OPCO investment opportunity and would therefore recommend to pass on that opportunity. I will now briefly run you through the PropCo investment opportunity. The PropCo investment opportunity is a 100 million equity injection in the formation of a PropCo in the single family for rent segment, which will lead into um, together, which will be managed by Sidewalk. This, we have analyzed this from a business perspective and consider this to be from a risk return perspective as outlined by my colleague Christopher earlier to be fully in line with the current fund strategy as the single family for rent market provides significant downside protection due to um, a high resiliency of cash flow. We see further market growth and we also believe in the strong fundamentals of the market. Therefore, we have created in a second step a detailed financial analysis here as well, based on conservative assumption of a loan to cost ratio of 50%, a levered cash yield of 5%, and an exit value of 250 million. This investment would lead to an IRR of 12% and a 1.6 times equity multiple over a five year period, which we consider, especially taking into account the very limited downside risk, to be a very attractive addendum to the fund. In addition, while we view that um, the, propose, the proposal is already quite attractive. We see that there could be two points in the proposal that could be amended. The first point in our view is that currently the, oper the, the manager of the portfolio, Sidewalk received a total of 15% net profit as a promote. We consider there could be a hurdle, that, that there could be a hurdle rate considered which would lower these uh, profit share. And in addition, we view that there could be a synergy potential in the midterm to combine those assets with the current assets held by the fund. I will now hand over to Stephen, who will walk you through our final recommendations. Thank you, Simon. So all in all, the short-term risks are very real, and we are not making light of any of them, particularly in context of the current macroeconomic conditions and an impending recession that Ryan has taken us through. However, if we take the long-term view, we do not believe we should be in any form of panic here. We should, not we should definitely not make any quick fight sales of any of our assets, particularly when valuations are low and we do not have any risk of default. We can manage our short-term liquidity needs and um, we are not in breach of any financial covenants. So in the short term, what we recommend to do is to shore up the fund's balance sheet, manage those liquidity needs and manage through our near-term debt obligations we should look into the future about where we think the fund uh, can increase exposure for benefit of the fund's performance. And we believe that to be the single family rental uh, asset class for the reasons that Christopher has identified. And in terms of the two uh, investment opportunities in front of Kate May, the OPCO and the PropCo, we would advise to pass on the OPCO investment opportunity as the returns there do not justify the risk that we need to take, especially as a core plus evergreen fund focused on residential assets there. That is much more aligned to what a tech VC uh, fund would look into, which is not the key purpose of our fund. We, however, would pursue the PropCo opportunity as that is much more a better fit strategically with our fund's objectives. And so that is our investment advice at CR Capital. We thank you for your attention and we'd be happy to field any questions. So in, in general, why didn't we do a sensitivity analysis for the PropCo in addition? 
we believe that the cash flows here are much more stable. So we believe even in, in the worst case where we would say, okay, maybe we have a slight decrease in the cash flows there. This would not change the overall picture as we might, as we believe this would not be a large drop in the overall IRR. And therefore we decided to not show a, um, also a sensitivity analysis for this prop code. I'd like to add to that point. The prop code opportunity provides a 5% uh, cash and cash yield, which is quite an attractive proposition, especially as the fund here, is, uh, the objective of the fund is to provide that long-term recurring revenue. If you take a look at the single family market uh, nominal yields, they're probably at about the four, four and a half percent. So this beats that. And so we think that this is quite an attractive uh, proposition. And in addition to that, if you take a look at the yields on single family uh, REITs, invitation homes and American Home for Partners, the yields at about just shy of, of, of 3%. So this opportunity is quite attractive. Yeah. Absolutely clear. Yes, so we, con we considered this point. Um, given the current fund exposure to the, to the single family for rent market is only 4%, this would be a rather limited um, contribution. And we looked also at it on a by unit basis on how many units this OPCO would need to add per year in order to match its expected growth returns. And we found out that in five years, in order to match the expected growth rates, this fund would, this operating company would need to grow from 3,200 units to 63,000 units, which would be almost the size of the current largest of the currently largest um, player in the market of invitation homes. And they, for them, it took way longer than five years. And therefore, we came up with the um, assumption that even if we would add additional units and would have some sort of additional upside scenario there, we still believe there's significant downside that this cannot be achieved. To, to build on Clement's point as well. Going back to the North Star for our fund, we are trying to provide that long-term stable recurring revenue uh, to our investors here. In terms of the synergies and the economies of scale that you might be able to gain from investing in both the UPCO and the UPCO and helping fuel that natural growth potential there only adds to the, to the potential upside. But as Clemens has identified, there is quite significant, uh, there is quite an aggressive rental growth assumption based on what their current projections are, of which in terms of our downside protection, we are quite wary of. So looking at that risk in terms of minimizing our downside risk, particularly in current economic conditions, we think it's more prudent to take a safer position as an evergreen fund. Also noting the fact that in the OPCO structure, you don't have the securities because this is just an equity position on an operating company that can serve as collateral in the case any of those risks, any blip in terms of those revenue assumptions occur there. Uh, and that is, that is fundamentally the reason why. Thank you. Thank you.